Today, we're taking down one of the last bosses in Black Myth Wukong, and that's the Great Sage's Broken Shell. It's been a long journey, and it's been a long fight, but now it's time to put everything that you've learned to take this boss down. For gear, I chose to wear the Full Heavens Equal Set, the Armor, and the Stab. This increases your critical hit chance and reduces your spell cooldown if you're successful with a critical hit. For the equipment slot, I brought the Plantain Fan, and for the Spirit, I brought Wandering White. To top that off, the transformation spell I used was Ebb and Flow, and Ebb and Flow is really good for a specific reason that we'll look at in a second. For the other three skills, you know we had to bring in a Pluck of Many because we can't forget about our minions, but instead of using Immobilize, I chose to use a Ring of Fire. And the last spell, and one of the best spells in my opinion, we have to bring in Cloud Step. This boss has two phases, and the plan is to get into that second phase as fast as possible because we want to have as much health as we can because that second phase gets kind of crazy. Once you get into the fight, most likely he's going to be sitting down. Run right up to him and cast Wandering White. This should briefly stun him and do some decent damage. From there, Use your plantain fan to cast those tornadoes and get them stuck into the corner. Jump on them and put pressure. Do as much damage as you can and do as many combos as you can. The final heavy attack in your combo may have a chance to briefly stun them as well. Once your tornadoes go away, start looking out for his attacks. He may throw a staff at you or he may start poking at you with it. He has a number of attacks that you need to look out for. But the key for this first phase is to not take any damage. If you start to take damage, use ebb and flow. Now the key with ebb and flow is his block. Whenever he starts to go into his combos, block with ebb and flow and watch for his meter to build up. When his meter builds up, you can do a big slash attack and it will do a ton of damage. You also have the option of leaving it charged up and doing light attacks. When his blade's fully charged up and you do light attacks, you have a chance to stun him. And because his light combo is so powerful, you can link these attacks together and get chain link stuns. When you transform back into your normal form, do your best not to use any gourds or spells. You want to save your mana for the second phase of the fight. If he still has health, use simple combos like two light attacks and a heavy attack so you can move into the second phase of the fight. For this second phase, he's a lot more aggressive. And because of that, We'll be using a method that we used to beat a previous boss, the Stone Vanguard. And just like that fight, it's going to take some patience. This boss has a large number of different attacks and combinations that he likes to use, and he switches it up pretty regularly. So the plan is to use the whole arena. You need to get as far away as possible from the boss. By doing this, you'll force him to use only a specific number of attacks, and they're very well telegraphed. You can see him coming a mile away. They have a long preparation phase that'll let you know which attack he's about to use. If you back up far enough, he won't be able to hit you with the staff throw. If you see him throw his staff into the middle of the arena and it stands upright, he's going to grab it, spin three times, and come down with the charged attack. If you're far enough away, you don't have to worry about the first two attacks. You only have to worry about the final heavy attack. That's why distance in this fight is extremely important. It'll limit the amount of attacks that he can hit you with. While you're keeping away, he'll walk slowly towards you. You can try to find the furthest part of the map that you can go to. Eventually, he will get close enough and start another attack. If you see him plant his staff into the ground and go into the pillar stance, he's going to lean forward and then come down with a smash attack. This is not a good time for you to attack. If you haven't noticed already, he has the same spells and stances as you do. So he can hit you with Immobilize and he can hit you with Rock Solid. If he hits you with Rock Solid, do not do a follow-up attack. This will put you into a grab and it'll do a ton of damage. Your best bet is to back up and wait for him to come out of that state. If you see him jump backwards and his staff lights up, that means he's about to come back forward and do the three spin smash. Each of these spins do damage, but they attack in a straight line. So dodge to the left or to the right. And when he finishes the attack, back up and create distance. Now this whole time, your transformation spell should have been recharging. And it's in our best interest to use your transformation spell's health bar instead of your own health bar. You can use Ebb and Flow again to get in and do some damage. Remember that you have the block, 
so you can build up power within the sword and do a heavy attack. The key here is to block, charge up the sword, and then do an attack. Most of the attacks that he does will be absorbed by the sword, but your focus meter will take a hit instead of your health. Just hold block and wait for your opportunity to attack. If he draws a ring of fire on the ground, this can be a good and a bad thing. This means that your focus will continuously build up while you're inside the circle but his will also build up as well. I advise that you don't fight inside of the fire unless you're transformed. Back up and then wait for him to start up his attacks again. Unfortunately, like I mentioned before, this boss has all of your attacks. If you see him raise his hand up to his face and then blow out some magical dust, he's about to use a pluck of many. He'll call out about two or three clones that'll attack immediately. Most likely one will appear next to you and one in front of you. If you see him raise up into the pillar stance and sit patiently, he'll summon a number of staffs that'll float around him, then they'll shoot at you. Instead of trying to dodge these, block these. While you hold deflect, they'll take down your stamina. Keep your eyes on the boss because he'll end his attack by charging at you and finishing it with a heavy attack. If you see him take a break after his attack, you can use this time to back up, get some distance, and let that transformation spell charge up. We want to use that transformation spell as many times as possible in this fight. Now, some of his attacks may look like their normal attacks that you've seen before, but this boss, he likes to link attacks into different combos. So if you've seen him do a regular heavy attack, he may follow that up with a jump kick and an additional heavy attack. At some point in the fight, you'll want to call out a pluck of mini. The best time to use it is when he's in a corner or if he's affected by the plantain fan tornadoes. The worst time to use it is if he's in the air or in the pillar sands. Your minions won't be able to reach him and it'll be a waste of a spell. If you are lucky enough to get him in a corner, try to do heavy attacks to keep him stunned. You can also use this time to back up and use a ring of fire to heal. If you're close enough to the boss when you use a ring of fire, it'll briefly stagger him. So choose wisely when you decide to use the skill. Continue the rotation of backing up, letting him attack, using your transformation spells, using a pluck of mini, and if you have any potions in your inventory, use those as well. This is one of the last fights. Don't hold any punches. Now there are a few things that you need to look out for. This boss doesn't like it when you cast too many spells or if you're trying to heal. He may hit you with immobilize if you're sipping from that gourd way too much. I just hope you're not close enough to him because he may grab you and take a sip of his own. While it is a good idea to keep your distance, you do need to get some light attacks in so you can build up that meter so you can cast your spirit ability. And once you get him in the corner, Wandering White is a perfect spirit for the job. Some of the best times to cast a plantain fan spell is when his back is close to a wall. You don't want to cast his spell out in the open because the tornadoes will move him away from you. It'll be that much more difficult to get close to him and get some hits in. He does have another attack where he jumps up onto a cloud and he flies around and slashes at you with his staff. This is the three part attack that ends with the heavy attack and he may also try to grab you. If you're transformed into Ebb and Flow, you can block these attacks and he can't grab you. Absorb all of his attacks and then do a counter attack of your own. Take your time, be patient, and finish this boss off. Let me know down in the comments, I'd hate to ask this, how many times did it take you to finish this boss? I hope you enjoyed this one and learned something new, and I will catch you in the next one. Some say... But the journey never happened. He is nothing but a monkey who lives in some storyteller's tall tale. <laughs> but now you will hear a tale which no one has ever known.